Pastor Novo, I'm a 3D artist in the game industry, and I'm going to give you a very brief crash course in using ZBrush for basic sculpting. I'm not going to explain much of the interface or go over best practices. I know you, you didn't get ZBrush because the idea of hundreds of buttons and menus and sliders sounds like a bucket of fun. You got ZBrush because you wanted to sculpt something cool. So let's just do that. It's time to brush some Zs. When you first open up ZBrush, you're going to get an empty screen. Don't worry if it looks a little bit different than my setup and doesn't have this really weird lumpy guy on it. Let's just make something that we can sculpt on. The easiest way to do that is to go into the light box. Just click this light box button up here. A bunch of presets will open up. I'm going to just double click on a sphere. It'll ask if you want to save your current project. This guy looks pretty lumpy, so let's throw him away. Okay, we have a sphere. We can already start sculpting. If you click and drag on your object, you'll see some things start happening. You'll notice that things are happening on both sides of the object. If you press X on your keyboard, you can turn symmetry off. Now if you click and drag on your object, you'll see that you're only affecting one side. You can toggle symmetry on and off by pressing X at any time. I'll press X again on my keyboard. It's back on, and I'm sculpting on both sides. This is useful for faces, bodies, anything that goes down the middle and has a split on both sides. I'll hit Ctrl Z to undo all those brush strokes. If I hold Alt instead of just clicking and dragging, I'll carve into my mesh. Without Alt, with Alt. Without Alt, with Alt. Let's undo all that. If you'd like to smooth some areas of your mesh, simply hold Shift and drag. You'll see the lumps are going away. Let's try changing the size of our brush. An easy way to do that is to hit S on your keyboard. You can drag this slider back and forth to adjust the size of your brush. We'll try a big brush. Press S again. Drag the size down and try a small brush. These are some of the most basic things you'll need for sculpting. Pulling, pushing, and if you'd like to rotate your object, or at least the camera around it, click and drag anywhere outside of it. To pan your object, hold Alt and click and drag anywhere outside of it. You can also do this with the right click. To move the camera further and farther away from your object, or closer to it, hold Alt as though you're about to pan, but while holding the click button down, let go of Alt and move in and out. Basic controls for moving around. And basic sculpting. Regular and Alt. Let's try making something similar to a star shape. Instead of pulling and pulling and pulling, I'm going to use a new brush. I'll press B on my keyboard to pull up the brush menu. I know that I'm looking for a brush called Snake Hook. To find any brush you know the name of, just start typing it. S for snake isolates all of the brushes that start with S. Snake Hook's right here. I'll scale my brush up by pressing S and pulling the slider up. Clicking and dragging with snake hook drags the polys around. You'll notice that as you do this, you run out of polygons and wind up with issues like this. ZBrush has a feature called Dynamesh that'll basically give you more polygons to work with. You don't need to worry too much about exactly how it works right now because we just want to start learning. To Dynamesh this object, go to the top of your screen and click on Tool. Inside of Tool, there's a Geometry drop-down. Inside the Geometry drop-down, there's a Dynamesh sub-palette. Just click the Dynamesh button, and we'll say no for now. Don't worry about what that stuff means right now. You can figure it out on your own later, or look up other tutorials. What it did do is give us more polygons to work with. So while this looks a little bit uh, jaggy, you can hold Shift, click to Smooth, And you'll see it's getting nice and soft again. 
I'll undo all of this. Let's make a happy star. So using the snake hook brush, by pulling with the brush palette and making sure I have S for snake, finding snake hook, I'm going to pull some shapes out, pull some more shapes out, one more, and we can adjust those. This is just for practice, so I won't waste time trying to make something nice. I'll switch back to the standard brush that we started with. Brush palette, B on your keyboard. Standard starts with an S, so I'll hit S. Standard is right here. If you know the keys, you can type them very quickly. For example, I'll switch to snake hook. I typed B, S, H, and now I'm in snake hook mode. I'll switch back to standard. B, S, T for standard. Now I'm in standard mode. I'll scale my brush down and just start sculpting. I'm so happy I know ZBrush. Okay, sorry, I'm done. Let's save this model so that we can keep working on it later. If you don't have this palette open on the right, you can again go to Tool at the top of the window and click Save As. You can think of objects as being tools in ZBrush. I'll just cut, put this one on my desktop. Star guy. And save. Now if I do something crazy, I can go back to the tool palette, load a tool, and I'll open the star that I saved. Back to sculpting. A quick final note before you try this on your own. Make sure to get the basic shapes, including silhouettes of every small detail of whatever you want to sculpt before you go in and start doing micro detail. The reason you want to do this is because if you start making very small details like this, and run out of polygons, you'll be tempted to Dynamesh. Tool, Geometry, Dynamesh. This brings back polygons and lets you keep working. But if you have truly fine detail, maybe like this, a few lines, then continue to manipulate your mesh. and Dynamesh again. You'll notice that some of the definition goes away. These became a little smoother. So before you do any very fine detail, just make sure to get the basic shape of your object taken care of. Once you've got the basic shape, you can divide the object. Subdivision works differently than Dynamesh. Dynamesh replaces your entire mesh with a new one that's similar to the one you saw before, but has even polygon distribution. By dividing your mesh, Control D, it subdivides each individual face and will smooth the mesh. You can also move back and forth between high and low subdivisions, either by pressing Shift D to go down and D to go up, or look inside of the tool menu, geometry, and this SDiv level. You can slide back and forth to select the subdivision level you'd like to work with. Just remember that using Dynamesh will wipe all of your subdivision levels. If I look in my tool palette, there's no more subdivision so I can't go back and forth. This is why it's so important to use Dynamesh before you start doing your detail work and only to make sure you have enough of a silhouette for your entire object. I like to keep these tutorials short, so if there's something that you'd like to know, just leave a comment and I'll try and get to you really quickly and get through these tutorials really quickly too.